Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the Bailey Wiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. If you're a DM who likes to wow your players and you're using platforms like Foundry Virtual Tabletop and Dungeon Draft, then you're in the right place. Today, we're doing a module showcase for Foundry VTT, and we're going over scene transitions, which is a great way to add some extra style and storytelling to switching between your scenes. To get started, we'll need scene transitions itself, as well as socket lib and lib wrapper, two library modules for Foundry VTT. Now let's dive right in. To get started with scene transitions, after we've enabled the module, we need to actually create a transition. You can do this by right-clicking on a scene in your scenes directory and selecting create transition. Alternatively, you can do that directly from your navigation bar. Clicking Create Transition will open up the transition interface. Up here is the preview for the images, and you can see that there are a lot of different settings. This preview option is basically making it so that we will not switch over to that scene, so you can tick that if you don't want to change the scene. This might be useful for having some kind of story element that you want to play within a scene, as opposed to actually transitioning to a scene. When it comes to setting up your image, You'll just browse through your files and select an appropriate image that you want to use. For example, I'll use something from the BaileyWiki landing pages to have a nice little background. And you can see that there is a nice preview. One thing you may notice then is that there is the background image opacity. You can think of this as the image being overlaid on top of a solid color background. So if you lower the image opacity, it's going to reflect that color more. And if you raise the opacity, it is going to be more clear. The default value of is 0.7. You can then change the color from the default of black to white or anything in between to suit the ambiance that you want to have. The background size can be specified as cover, or you can use things like the exact dimensions. And in terms of background position, you can again change that. This is going to be vertical and horizontal centering. So you can choose whether you want this to be left, right, center, up, or down aligned. Generally speaking, I wouldn't change those too much. You'll notice that you can also specify a video. You also have the option to loop the background if you want to use a video. I would suggest using WebM files for any kind of video and that will allow you to loop the animation repeatedly and play it like a GIF or GIF, depending upon how you prefer to pronounce it. And then there's also the option to mute the background, which is highly recommended if you're using a video and you're going to use any additional audio files. Speaking of audio, we'll jump down for a quick moment and we can select audio sources to play when the transition plays. That'll take any kind of audio that works in Foundry So for example, we can use any of these pieces. One thing to note is that it is always going to play the entire duration of the sound, and it's going to be using the Foundry Play Sound system, so you won't actually see the sounds in your playlists controller here. So I would recommend keeping that audio source shorter if you think that you're going to be changing scenes or playing another transition soon. If you have a whole three minute song playing whenever you play the transition, and then you make another transition shortly, both those sounds will lay over top of each other. Looping audio is just going to repeat the audio for the duration of your scene transition. It's not gonna keep repeating if the transition is already done. And then you can use the volume slider to adjust the volume for folks. Scrolling back up, we have some font controls here. Font size is 28 pixels by default. You can adjust that as you see fit and you have your font color. You wanna tweak your background overlay color and your font colors to make sure that your text is nice and legible. Speaking of text, this whole field here is where you can add in your very own text and custom message. So as you can see, I've entered in some custom text and you can use this for either flavoring the scene before your players enter it or giving yourself something to read off, etc., and it's a great way to add in that little bit of extra information. The preview will not update up top with the text until you first saved and closed it, 
but if you want to double check and see how the text looks, you can save and close it and edit again. Notice now that actually my sound is previewing for this while I have the edit transition open. So it's a nice way to check your sound that you're using, etc. You may want to drop the volume all the way down or remove your sound if that is obtrusive to you when you're doing your edits. This is a great way to also double check that the colors work between your background and your text color, or if you want to increase the size of your font. And you can, just like in any other text box in Foundry, use different formatting here. So if we wanted this to be a custom flavor, when we save and close, it will reflect any of those additional formatting changes that you've made. You can use the source HTML option in order to get even more granular with customizations and changing default styles, etc., just like any other text box in Foundry, and they'll all get reflected in your scene transition. After you've configured your text, images, and audio, next up is actually configuring the fade in and delay. So this is how long the transition is going to come in. Fade in is just how long in milliseconds before it transitions in, and then how long are we going to stay on this transition before we actually go to the scene. Finally, the fade out is how long it's going to linger before finishing that transition over to the scene. So you can tinker with these in order to make the pop in and pop out of the transition more or less aggressive, and how long it's actually going to stay up. It's particularly useful if you want this to be a longer bit of exposition, and if you're trying to have this exposition for a reason to allow you to work a little bit longer on the scene while the transition is playing for your players, or you want them to really be able to read this, you can turn on and off this skippable option. If a scene transition is skippable, the player can simply left click to end the transition early. There is the GM ends for all toggle, which means that when the GM clicks, it's going to end the transition. Useful if you want to have more direct control over how long a scene transition plays. The toggle for don't show other GM windows is normally on, and basically that's just making so the transition doesn't show for other GMs and keeps things unobtrusive. I personally like to see the transitions whenever I'm GMing, and if I happen to have someone else logged in as a GM, then it's nice for everyone to be on the same page. As a GM, you can always navigate away in order to bypass that. The show user interface toggle controls whether the side panels and buttons are visible during the scene transition, allowing users to interact with character sheets, etc. So this might be useful if you want to actually have some roles or something like that during your scene transitions. Finally, we have the activate scene for everyone, which is actually going to drag people over to the scene properly. So let's see what these scene transitions look like put together. I made another one for this other map. And if we select play transition, our audio will play and we'll have this background. And we'll notice that it's activated and it's dragged this player that I logged in to the scene as well. Do the same thing here. If we want to end it early, clicking will immediately begin the fade animation. So let's look at the basic application of scene transitions. Another aspect that's really great about scene transitions is there's a really detailed API for writing macros. On the module page for scene transitions and also on the GitHub, the API has a breakdown on being able to write macros and everything to be able to fire these scene transitions using a macro or a button. This is particularly useful if we use the scene transitions to have some exposition or story element without necessarily changing the scene. Returning to Foundry, you can see this macro that I've written for displaying an image really quickly. I just copy and paste this directly from the module page. This top portion is for Foundry version 9, so you can safely ignore that. 
But then assuming you're on V10, we have all of these different fields that have some explanations. Note the scene ID here, it's set to false, meaning that we're not actually going to switch the scenes up, but you could look up the ID for your particular scene using a data inspector module or through the console. Then your content is just the text that will appear on the scene transition, and you can set your font color, size, etc. So this is how you can create a nice element for if you want to have some sort of pop-up as you're walking around. And if I execute this macro, we'll see we have the standard scene transition experience, but when this concludes, we're not actually shifting scenes. This is a great way to include a kind of mini theater of the mind scene within a top-down explorable map that you have. So if you want to have extra exposition about a particular scene that you want to give your players a front-on view rather than a top-down view, this is a great way to handle that. This is going to conclude our coverage of the Scene Transitions module for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. You can grab it on the add-on module browser in Foundry. The module page, as always, will be linked down in the description. And you can also find the macro that we talked about in the comments down below and also on the BaileyWiki Discord. I hope that this has shown you some of the power of scene transitions. It's a really cool module for adding some extra storytelling elements and some extra presentation to switching up scenes or adding those little bits of extra detail when you're discussing elements within a scene. We're really excited to talk more about this, particularly with its applications to macros. So stay tuned for additional episodes on that. Once again, this has been Zephyr with the BaileyWiki channel. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content, and consider becoming a patron. Not only do you support the channel, but you also get access to all of the modular systems and scenes that we've ever made, including these great town maps that you've seen in the background. Thank you so much for watching, happy gaming, and have a good one.